Hey, this is Ralph, and uh, in this video, we're going to work on a three column web page layout. We just did a two column layout with a header and a footer, so let's jazz it up a little bit more. I'm going to go to my HTML, and let me see, let me do a file save as. I'm going to take my old file, and I'll just put a little three there, designated as being different, and change the reference to the CSS. Change my CSS, I'll do file save as, and this will be layout three. Dot CSS. There we go. So we got that taken care of. And what I've got now is I've got column one, I've got sidebar. I want to jazz this up a little bit. And let's say I'm going to have three things three column layout. So I'm going to div ID equals sidebar one. There we go. And then I've got my main content area. I'm going to restructure this a little bit though. My div is going to appear after the two sidebars. Okay. There we go. So I've got sidebar one, and I'll call this one sidebar two. And then I've got my column one. So now I've got these three critical parts all within my main content area. And the sequence is kind of important. I'm going to take one sidebar and float it to the left. I'm going to take the other sidebar and float it to the right. And my main column is going to automatically slide up right in between them. So let's fix that up on the CSS side of things. Keep in mind, I do have new IDs here. One, two, and so. So let's see. My main, I'm going to keep the same. No problems there. It's got a background color that we won't see. It's got um, min height, and I did overflow hidden, which is kind of helpful when you're floating elements inside of a block. I do have a column one, but I now, of course, I also have a sidebar one and sidebar two. So let's see, I'm going to change this over to sidebar one, copy that, and let's make a sidebar two. And let's see what we've got going on here. Column one has um, a blue background color and it has a width of 690. I'm going to knock that down to about uh, 490. Okay. And let's see. And I don't want to be floating my column one anymore because that's going to be in the middle. Just so it makes a little bit more sense to you. Let me grab all of this, pop it down here. So now we're in the order that things appear. Not essential, but you remember in my main column, I've got sidebar one, sidebar two, column one. Sidebar one, sidebar two, column one. Sidebar one, I'll go ahead and set this all to 350. Just, these are the minimum heights. Just want to get these organized here. And I am going to have margin right, but that's not going to be the, the exact right number there. So sidebar one, here's the critical step. I'm going to float it to the left, and it's going to have a width of 200 pixels. Sidebar one is going to be on the left, and it's going to be 200 pixels wide. Sidebar two is going to float to the right, and it's going to be 200 pixels wide. Now remember, the total width that I'm dealing with here is 990. So if I take 4 from that, that means I have 590 of space left. Column 1 doesn't actually have to have a width set on it. Okay? Don't need that. Don't need it at all. Uh, min height, I will set 350 so they're all the same. So let's kind of recap on what I've got going on here. Sidebar 1 is gray, has a height, Margin right doesn't even need to be on there, so I'm going to get rid of the margin right. Sidebar 1 is floating to the left and is 200 pixels wide. Sidebar 2, I can get rid of this also actually. Those margins are going to go on column 1. Sidebar 2 is also gray, but I'll change this out. How about if we change it to... Um, it's kind of an ugly yellow there or something. So sidebar two has minimum height. It's floating to the right and is 200 pixels wide. Column one is blue, has a minimum height. So column one margin left is going to be 200 pixels. 
margin right is going to be 200 pixels. And I'm getting those numbers because those are the widths of the sidebars. So I'm going to hit save. Over to the browser, I need to go to my layouts three page. And there we go. Three column layout. Now keep in mind this is a fixed layout. Remember my entire container is 990 pixels wide. So if I resize this, of course everything stays 990. My columns stay 200 and my blue column by default is 590. And I get the horizontal scroll if I go below, you know, if I get too narrow there. So something to keep in mind, but we can we can flex this certainly. If I just go to my container and instead of doing 990 pixels maybe I go to 90 percent there we go so now it's 90 percent and just by making that little change is really all I need to do if I go back to my browser hit refresh watch this I can resize that browser and I've got a flexible layout now my sidebars are fixed my sidebars are still 200 pixels wide but my main column here my main content area that's expanding and contracting and that's usually the way you want to do it you very rarely want your sidebars to expand and contract because they usually contain things like navigation menus and stuff and you don't want those to get reformed so using a fixed width on a sidebar even though you have an overall flexible layout is still very very common good thing to do and my main content area will expand and contract now of course you don't have to keep these two columns equal widths. You could easily change those out. So I could jump back over to my uh, CSS and I can say, all right, well sidebar one, um, that's gonna be 250 pixels wide. Sidebar two, I'll keep it 200. But then my column one, I need to change the margin left to 250 to accommodate that. Back over to the browser, refresh, there we go. And you've got yourself now a uh, flexible two column layout with a wider left sidebar than you do a right sidebar but now you got your basic three column layout with header and footer now another common variation of this that I've seen quite a bit on especially on a lot of blogs too is where they have the sidebars and they're both on the same side okay so that's another way of going and we could certainly uh, modify a little bit to accommodate that I'm gonna do this I'm going to go to my CSS and I'm gonna take my column one and I'm gonna put it up here at the top okay so I'm gonna have column one on the far left then I'll do sidebar one sidebar two okay so it's gonna change just a little bit here and I will head over to um, actually there's a couple ways we could go about this what's the better way well, we have a couple approaches here. We could take our column one, float it to the left, take sidebar one and float it to the left, and that will get sidebar two all nice and neat. And that would actually get us our look. But if we want to maintain, that would be an ideal way in a fixed width layout. So let's go ahead and do that first. So I'm going to keep, so here's my HTML, column one, sidebar one, sidebar two. I'm going to save that. Go to my CSS, and I'm going to go back to uh, 990 pixels and just so we're clear I'm going to put these in the same order as they are in the HTML column one let's see I'm gonna take away these margins for a second here column one is going to be float left and I will set the width on it I'll set the width to uh, 590 I don't know if I can spell 590 px. Okay. Sidebar one is also going to float left, and that'll be 200 pixels wide. Sidebar two, technically, I don't need a float, but I'll keep the width on there. Jump back over to Chrome, refresh. Oops, I float left on that last sidebar also. So I'll go ahead and float this puppy to the left. There we go. So there's our uh, three column layout. And remember, we are back to a fixed layout. So there will be a point to where I start to shrink it down. And of course, I've got a horizontal scroll action. 
but this is a three column layout with two sidebars on the same side uh, yeah yeah not a bad way to go so that's one way of taking care of it now if I wanted to maintain that flexible nature though so let's try this out I'm gonna head up to my um, instead of 990 pixels I'm gonna go back to uh, 90 percent now watch what happens now I'm gonna refresh that and you remember I've got these fixed widths you know I've got like I think it's 590 200 200 so they're not accommodating the space and then of course then you get all this kind of weirdness going on so that becomes a little bit problematic something has to give so now that we've got a flexible layout let's kind of restructure a little bit like this I'm going to take go to my HTML and I'm gonna put my column one here at the very end so now I'm back to sidebar sidebar column one and I'm gonna do some floating to the right I still want to do fixed widths on sidebars my earlier advice still holds true sidebars that might have nav menus and stuff fixed widths are good for those so I've got my HTML restructured sidebar one sidebar two column one okay I'll go to my CSS I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it down here just so it makes sense here sidebar one is gonna float to the right and that's gonna be 200 pixels wide sidebar two is gonna float to the right and that's also 200 pixels wide column one though um, I'm not gonna set the width for it and I'm gonna take float out for now so we can see what this does now let's check this out I'm gonna save this head over to the browser refresh and now we've got our three column layout but watch this it should oops click the wrong wrong little menu there let me go back to Chrome there we go so notice I can resize this so my sidebars are staying fixed but my main column is expanding and contracting to fit the users browser window so there's another three column layout with two sidebars off to the side in a flexible orientation have fun with these.